Hey guys, today I wanted to talk about a store in particular, Is Games, which has 1,700 copies of a certain commander card. Let me explain to you what happened. I went back and I studied and I saw they bought out all the major retailers. They bought out all the TCG players that were lower than their price. And currently they are the lowest price. But of course that can change as people add listings and they realize, oh, this 50 cent card is actually worth $3. I'm going to list it now when previously it was just bulk. The card is good. It is in common from the newest commander set or from a commander set. And so it's guaranteed. It's not like a random factor. You're going to get it or you're not going to get it. You're going to get it if you buy that commander deck. It was 50 cents when they first started. It's $3 now. I'm going to break down why a store would want to do this. And it's very simple. This store now has a monopoly on this one card. So when people do orders and stuff, this store will come up because let's say I'm making an EDH deck and I just need an extra one of these. I go ahead and I search who has the cheapest price and it's them. So I'm more likely to shop from them if they have okay prices because I don't want to, I want to package it up and have shipping and stuff like that. This seller is a very, very big seller. And this is why they would want a monopoly on it. At the same time, they are making a very healthy margin. As you can see, the card was about, was under a dollar. At the low, it's 57 cents. Then it kind of hit a dollar and then kind of hit $2. And then it is a steady, steady incline. And the steady incline leads for you to accumulate. A lot of times, the biggest misconception is that you can accumulate cards extremely fast. Unless you're buying from Star City Games, Channel Fireball, or a big vendor who has a lot of these, you need to buy from multiple small vendors. And that's annoying as blank. That's so annoying because I've done it before and this dude has one, this dude has two, this dude has four, this dude has one near mint and one light play, and this dude has a heavily damaged but 10 near mint. So you, it's so hard to track like what's actually going on when you have, uh, let's say, 50 orders for this card out there and the average order size is only four. Yes, you have 200 cards, but you have literally 50 orders out there. And some orders will be lost. Some orders will not be delivered. Some orders, the conditioning will not be correct. You have to look for all that. It's a very time-intensive, labor-intensive thing that you have to do. Now, on the flip side, to sell this card, this particular card, which is a commander one of card that most people just are going to want to buy as a singleton, you have to ship, let's say he bought 2,000 of, 2,000 of them. Any, let's say 1,500. Let's be generous and say some people ordered two of them for whatever reason. 1,500 different addresses, 1,500 stamps, mailing, postage, you as an individual cannot mail 1500 things it's just logically if i looked at the model and that's one thing that drives me crazy about the mtg finance realm is no one takes like consideration that shipping time stamps padding top loader these things kind of cost money envelopes these things all cost money and they eat into your profit but the most the, the thing that eats into your profit most of all is the fact that like holy crap you have to you have to it's just it's just so many copies of them and you're just slowly getting rid of them plus they are non-liquid assets they are slowly moving but it's not like you can liquidate them and get a good price now let's talk about for a store this makes a lot of sense because when someone looks for the card, they, they get the store and they're like this, oh cool, this store has it for the lowest price. And the store can always change its price and pretty much dominate or buy out vendors selling it for cheaper. And then maybe the buyer will order other cards at a higher price from this vendor to either get the free shipping or because of convenience. So it makes sense for a store to do this and they are going to make some money off raising the price but for an individual to own 2,000 copies of a common from commander that's in the pre-con deck it's not a random card 
that would never work because of everything I said. Logistics, trying to sell them again, getting them in the mail in the first place is just horrendous. Um, I tried it and when you order a lot of stuff in the mail, it does get lost quite a bit. And it's just not something that I would ever want to do again. Overall, it's an interesting model and it's what happens when a store does it. Now, I will be on record for saying that stores do this all the time. Star City Games does this all the time. When you see a price go up in price, you might be like, huh, maybe an individual bought that card. If it's in a commander, a recent commander deck, if it's in a recent printed set in 2017, or 2016, 2015, very difficult for an individual to move a price. But very easy for a store to do exactly what this store did, which is let's gonna make let's make a 50 cent card into a free dollar card and let's hold a monopoly on the low. So people will shop from us when they buy EDH staples. That's what happened here. It makes a lot of sense, but for an individual, it makes absolutely no sense for them to do this. Like, what are you going to do with 2,000 copies? But as a store, hey, you know, those 2,000 copies are an advertising marketing for us because every time someone searches for this card, our store name pops up. Anyway, leave me a comment below if you agree or disagree. Or do you agree with this practice? Like, I don't agree with this practice, but again, I'm not a store, and stores do have to make money. It seems very manipulative, and it definitely raises the prices of these cards for the end player. There's no doubt in my mind that that is the goal here, is to get the end player to spend lots and lots of money and advertise to that person who's interested in EDH. Anyways, bye guys.